We, the people, do hold all the power. How is everyone today? Thank you so much for joining me. I'm here solo today. Lewis is traveling, as he said yesterday. And uh, I'm going to try to treat you to a good show today. Uh, we've been doing a lot of digging. And uh, I have to thank Master Baggy Eric, who uh, really brings up a lot of content. He puts it in our back room for us, so it makes it a lot easier uh, for us to do these shows. Thank you, Eric. appreciate everything that you do. And uh, Denise is joining our team, too. Denise, Denise, can't wait to... Uh, have you on board and have you uh, clued into what we do uh, in the backstage. Help is really important, uh, especially doing a show like we're doing here. There's just so many moving parts. And in fact, uh, I sit here sometimes going, how am I going to put this together? Where does this match up with this? So it, it can be a little confusing. So a little help in that area um, will just make it a lot easier. As I mentioned, Lewis is traveling today, but he will uh, try to join us tomorrow, depending on the itinerary. He's uh, out of the country, uh, so a very different time zone. So we'll see if we can line things up. If we can't, what we may do is just do a little recording and then maybe just uh, stream that during the live portion of this show. So thank you all for being here. I appreciate you so much. Uh, we've got a lot to go through today. There's a lot going on. But before we get into content, I wanted to give you... Um, yeah, a little bit of background. Uh, you know, I've been doing uh, a long time truth seeker is what I've been. And, and I've, I'm one, never one to follow the crowd. I always kind of do things differently than the crowd uh, because I realized very early on, actually, it was uh, during my high school graduation. There was the, the speaker that we had. I don't even remember who it was, a sports figure of some sort. He said, if you follow the crowd, you'll never get any further ahead than the crowd. So I think I made a conscious decision at that point, not following the crowd anymore. And I've always been sort of outside of the mainstream and, uh, you know, looking at things very differently. And when it came to 2020, um, the, a lot of my business has been really coaching with uh, business owners and, and natural health practitioners and, and other coaches and digital marketers. I've been in the marketing industry for a very long time. And one of the things that uh, people started to call and they started asking me, what do we do? We're shut down. We're not allowed to operate our business. We can't leave the house. What do we do? And one of the pieces of advice that I gave them back then actually still applies uh, to a large extent today to what's going on because the conversations we're having, you guys can, can tell me whether or not you're having these conversations as well. People are frazzled, right? People don't really know what to expect. Everything's a little bit weird right now. Uh, I was having this conversation with a friend earlier this morning. And they were telling me, it's like, you know, this is really uh, a strange time. And it's like, we don't know what the path forward is. None of us do. If I told you I know what the path forward is, you could say, Rob, you're a liar. Because I'm not going to do that. Because I would be a liar at that point, right? I don't know what the path forward is. I do know, however, that uh, there is a path forward. And it's, you know, a little bit choppy waters. It's like being on a cruise, right? To get to the next stop, sometimes you got to go through those rough waters. A little uncomfortable. And some people get sick. But then you arrive where you want to arrive and the beach is beautiful. The sun is out. You know, it's like, man, I can't believe how, how beautiful this place. You know, it was worth it. And I think we're going to get there. So the advice that I have for you today is, is simply um, find routine in your days because that is going to help keep you stable. So if you got a routine, I get up in the morning. I, I get up at the same time every morning, uh, weekends included. I get up at the same time. And I do the same thing when I get up, I, you know, the breakfast and getting ready. And it's like the same routine every single day. Why do I do that? Because it gives me stability, right? If you had a different routine every day, you'd really never know. And, and like, it, if, let's pretend you're in the shower, right? Everyone has a little routine in the shower. I do the hair first. I do this. I do that. You know, you got all this thing. That you, and if you're out of order with it, you tend to forget. Oh, did I wash the feet? Did I not wash the feet, right? So it's a good idea to have at least some sort of familiar routine, because everything out there is a little bit crazy and the routine can get interrupted, but at least you start off the day with the feeling of a foundation of having some sort of viable routine where you can feel comfortable. Okay, I got the day off. To, I got up right side of the bed. I got up at the right time. I had my breakfast. I, you know, I did the things I normally do. I got showered. I got shaven, you know, whatever. And, uh, you know, you kick your day off the right way that way. If you can do that, that helps a lot. And the other piece is... In everything that goes on, I ask people to remain flexible. And they go, oh, I hate to be flexible. I just, you know, I want, I want my goal. I want to get there. It doesn't always happen, especially with what's going on now, right? Be nice to be able to do exactly what we wanted to do. We're back in 2019. Things are pretty predictable. You kind of know what the days are going to be like. It's a little bit different now, right? Uh, so we got to roll with it. We just got to say, okay, you know, it may not be perfect. Okay, what can I do based on this new piece of information that came out? How do I operate and get around it? So if you can remain flexible, you won't break. If you remain brittle, you're going to break, 
right? And and that's the really the 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 moral here, if anything, is to remain flexible, and uh, be prepared for the unexpected. Literally, be prepared for the unexpected. We don't know what's coming from day to day. Those people uh, who went to work on nine eleven are going to have a normal day. They got their coffee, they got their bagel, right? Uh, and they went to work. Little did they know their lives were going to be dramatically changed an hour or so later. We don't know. So we want to prepare ourselves as best we can for the unexpected. I'm not saying there's going to be another 9-11. I'm not saying that. But you've got to be prepared. Right? We've got to be prepared. And I always say keep your head up. Uh, keep your eyes open. Pay attention to the news feeds that you follow, whether it's Renegade Media, Screw Big Gov, or whatever. Pay attention. Because when we see something, we're going to post it. And that's weekends, evenings, holidays. Uh, you know, Lewis and I are kind of like a fanatic a little bit about that. And we'll post whatever we find. And you can be, you know, on at least educated <clears throat> to what's going on. It's important to me. Because you know, the unexpected is kind of the expected now. And I have this belief. <clears throat> I, really, I really anchored this one in. No matter what happens, we're going to prevail. Really. We're going to. We got this. We will win. That's what gets me out of bed in the morning. That's what keeps me going all day long. No matter what happens, <clears throat> I've got that, that vision. I, I never lose sight of that, that we're going to win. So I'm going to leave that with you, and, and you can process that and think about it in your own life and see how to apply it, because I think it's going to help um, as we go through you know, what seems to be more turbulent times ahead for us. So I don't know, but um, if we're ready for it, is it going to be so bad? And people will look to us, and we will become the people they, they rely on for, you know, getting them through. So you want to be a leader? That's how you can lead. Just lead yourself and people will follow because they're like, oh, this guy knows what's going on or this person knows how to handle themselves in this situation. I'm going to follow them. They know the way out of the fire, right? Uh, I'm going to follow the person who seems to know. So if you can do that, you'll be really, really good off. Okay, let's pop into some content. Enough chatter on the motivational stuff. Of course, I love motivational stuff, as you know, um, but uh, we got to get into some business today. Um, screw Big Gov, if you have not been there, you could find out information about the upcoming Truth Tour, which I played the video right at the beginning. I thought you guys would uh, like to see that again. Uh, Lisa's been working hard at keeping that updated and adding new speakers every time. So almost every few days, there's another version of that video, and we've got more presenters. So the list is getting bigger. Um, the event uh, always in the last couple of weeks really started to expand and it, it's really uh, is looking really really great so truthtour.net if you want to go there or screw big gov and click on the truth tour button that you see there and you could find it uh, you can find uh, the cages video and on the bottom right there's a social media tab and there is a tab right next to that for swag so t-shirts and, and goodies like that uh, that you'd like to get your hands on that is my friends that is where you will find them if you want to find me um, very easy on telegram i'm renegade media and you can email me, robert at renegademedia.tv, robert at renegademedia.tv. And a lot of you are emailing me and sending me stuff. Bravo. I appreciate that. That is awesome. And, uh, you know, it really helps. It really helps put the show together in a new and, and fun way. All righty. <clears throat> so uh, let's talk about the eight Republicans who, uh, when they were at the baseball field a few years back. Um, so, you know, he's he's got some stuff going on. And... Uh, Maybe not the best pick. Okay, Jim Jordan. Now, the other side of the coin, right? Uh, so this is Lewis's words. It's clear to me that Jim voted to keep McCarthy in as a speaker on Tuesday purely as optics to not stir the pot. As he knew he would be in line for the speaker seat, which, of course, he announced today he would be. Remember, his name continually popped up during the McCarthy vote fiasco months ago. That was back in January. And he kept saying he was not interested. Timing is everything. He'd be a great pick, and I believe would push the envelope. I think so. But there's been moments with him where you go, well, really, is he, is he everything that he's cracked up to be, or is there more here uh, than meets the eye? So I have my doubts. I know, I know some people are like, oh, you know, just, just give him a chance, give him a chance. Okay, I'll give him a chance, absolutely. Um, I don't know if he's the right pick. I want to dig in. I'll, I'll reserve judgment for a little while. Okay, third one on the list um, and I should be flipping through these because I had their photos, too. Look at that. Um, third guy on the list, President Trump. Um, Lewis said, I was told several months ago that this was not only a plan, but it was plausible, and Trump entertained this idea, or did he feign interest, do the bigger plan, uh, 
the people asking Trump to jump in are serious, although there is a bit of tongue-in-cheek uh, fun happening as well. Uh, Trump said his focus is president, frankly, even though he would mix it up, uh, mix it up a bunch and uh, be third in line and camel toe, get the boot. I don't see it happening. Now, time for a dose of reality. Trump is already commander in chief, and he probably wouldn't get the votes due to the anti-Trump rhinos in the House unless they are just playing a part, which could be. And Lewis says, "Enjoy the show." Got a, got a lot of points here. Got a lot of points here. Uh, the Trump idea is interesting. I, 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 I'd entertain that. Um, I just don't see it happening. I just don't see. Yeah, you know, you you, you don't need that in there. Uh, you know, that kind of power in there. And like he said, I don't know that he would get the votes because if you see how many wanted to keep McCarthy, how many were in line with keeping a rhino in power, it tells you a lot. That's quite the show. Crazy. All right. This is Representative, um, uh, let's see here, Bob Good. Um, I got my videos out of order. Sorry about that. He's on uh, Charlie Kirk uh, McCarthy. Personally, you know, uh, when he agreed to that last continuing resolution, uh, I mean the, the budget uh, the spending limit, and he said, no, there's no limit, but we'll put a date on the end of it rather than a price tag on the end of it. So imagine having a, having a credit card and you could spend as much as you want, but only until January of 24. What would you do? Would you say, oh, I'll wait, I'm not going to spend anything. Or would you spend like crazy? There's no limit. Buy everything you want. There's absolutely no limit. Well, that's essentially what they did. I don't know about you, but that was it for me with McCarthy. I like, had a little patience for him. I never wanted him in there in the first place, but that did it. This is not what we need right now. And then, you know, again, you, you go back and you say, oh, well, is the budget, is the deficit really real? Or are they just printing money? I think maybe there's a, there's a, a case to be made that we're simply printing money. But even if we aren't, you know, even if we are or aren't, it really doesn't matter. You just don't want that much overhead, uh, you know, because whoever is carrying that debt, Fed, right, has power over us. Think about it. Your credit card debt's high. Who's controlling you? Who's, you know, if they want that money, they'll put a lien on your house. They'll come after your salary. That You know what I mean? You're beholden to it. So whether or not it's real or not, it, 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 has, it serves the purpose of Interesting. I, I like the, uh, the, the idea of it. I mean, certainly it would shake things up. And he had the, the point that he made there was we'd get organized, right? But again, he'd have to pass, he'd have to win the vote. And I don't know that he would uh, in the House. There's a lot of anti-Trumpers, a lot of rhinos in there. And they want the spending. Remember, we talked about this yesterday. Why do they, they want the spending? Because their job is not to care about the American people. They're there, to send, they're there to take care of their constituents. They want as much money as they can bring back home. They're going to Washington to get money. That's what they're doing. They're going to Washington to get money. And they bring that money back into their area, right? And you know there's kickbacks. You know there's bribes. You know there's all kinds of things. Hey, we'll get you a motor scooter. We'll get you a new home. We'll get you a motor home, a boat. How about a yacht? You know, uh, all of that stuff comes back. So when you have no debt limit, think about it. What better situation could you possibly have? This is why they want to keep him in. The Democrats love it. There, it's a spending jubilee for them. They love it, absolutely love it. And you can tell there's only eight Republicans that said no to that. Wow, that's interesting, right? So, I'm I'm going along with that. It's like you know, I like the idea. I think it's kind of fun. I think you know, would it would it actually happen? Who knows? What does Matt Gates have to say? Do you think that how you want to? Ex-President Trump uh, to be speaker? I would. Have you talked to him about it? I have. And what did he say? Oh, I keep my conversations with the former president uh, between the two of us. <laughs> Good answer there. Good answer. He keeps his uh, conversations with him and the president, you know, private, which is what it should be. Uh, it's not meant to be shared with the world. So, um, so they're having conversations with uh, President Trump, clearly. You know, Hannity brought it up last night. You're seeing Bannon talking about it. Uh, you're talking about Gates. And, and uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene said, I'm voting for nobody. If it's not Trump, I'm not voting for anybody as speaker. Uh, you know, so the chatter is there. 
Whether or not it results in anything, who knows? You know, Washington is old chatter all the time, isn't it? Uh, so we'll see. Uh, we'll pay attention to this and, and we'll see uh, what comes of it. Um, there was a, a quote here. I'm, I'm going to go out of order a little bit. This is from D.C. Drano. And basically he said, <clears throat> if Trump were speaker, he'd be able to subpoena the DOJ crooks persecuting him. He'd cut off funding for the FBI that raided his house go anywhere, but okay. Um, He'd cut off Ukraine funding because Congress controls the purse strings, right? He'd impeach Mayorkas, Garland, and Ray. Again, would those really go anywhere? I don't know, but it would be a good shot. He'd be the most powerful man in America. Interesting way of looking at it. Funny to see, uh, you know, what he'd be able to do with that. That uh, makes a lot of sense that he'd have that much power if he were Speaker of the House. Kind of interesting. So we're happy to do it. Interesting. So you got all these people talking about it. Matt Gates, all the rest of them talking about it. And Trump himself said if it would help the party, I'd do it. Of course, his focus is what? Winning the presidency again, right? That's the, that's the game he's in right now. Fighting everything. And, and it's just you know a lot of work to do that uh, based on the kind of climate we have out there now. But he would do it. All right, so let's pay attention. What do you guys think? Do you think it'll happen? Do you think it'll happen? I don't know. Love to see your comments on it. Put it there. All right. Laura Loomer has a scoop. Let's look at Laura Loomer's scoop because this is interesting. So she's going after Lauren Bobert. Lauren Bobert was given $31,000 in June of 2023 by Speaker McCarthy's Control Protect the House 2024 Joint Fundraising Committee in exchange for never supporting buying them off. And obviously, some can be bought. Isn't that interesting? Not doesn't make me happy, but that's I think that's the way Washington really works. Uh, you do what you got to do. You, you get the payoffs you can because uh, I, I think Nancy May said it uh, yesterday. She said uh, running a campaign in Congress, to win uh, her seat in Congress, costs $6 million every two years. That's a lot of fundraising. So any little bit you can get your hands on, you know, what is it, 23,000 or 31,000, that's a big help. Not everything, but it's certainly a big help. Okay, I'll make your promise. Give me the 31,000 that goes into her fund. And then she gets another payment for another 2,000. Interesting. But this is, this is how Washington works. Are you happy with that? I'm not happy with that. I'm looking for the new Washington, right? After this all gets cleaned up and we do drain the swamp, because we will. This can't continue. Um, the system doesn't work. So when we get there, what's it going to look like? Well, you know, on the other side, uh, what if they don't have to fundraise? What if they're all given a certain amount of money and they can do, you know, whatever they need to do and there's no fundraising? We take that out of the equation. Maybe the horse trading stops. It's good to dream, right? I, I, <laughs> I like to dream. So I certainly uh, think that that might be fun. All right. Acting Speaker, Patrick McHenry. So this is a guy who was named right after they removed McCarthy. And he was named uh, right away. And his first move was to kick Pelosi out of her office. <laughs> okay, this was a good move. She's in the Speaker of the House's office. She didn't move. Kevin McCarthy didn't have the gumption, the balls, to kick her out. So she stayed. McCarthy's out. This guy takes over. An hour later, he's like, you're out. As one of his first acts as acting Speaker, Representative Patrick McHenry ordered the former Speaker, Nancy Pelosi, and viewed by Politico. Please vacate the space tomorrow. The room will be rekeyed. In other words, your keys will no longer work, wrote a top aide on the Republican-controlled House Administrative Committee. Um, The room was being reassigned by the acting speaker for speaker office use only. She's not the speaker. Get out. Good job. I love it. Um, McHenry, a close McCarthy ally, was first on his list to become acting speaker after the California was booted Tuesday afternoon. Only a select few House lawmakers get a hideaway offices in the Capitol compared to their commonplace presence in the Senate. <clears throat> Here's an image. 
and you can see the image on the right is what um, Pelosi's office looked like about 8 p.m. last night. Here's what's interesting. You know why she wasn't there, why she didn't vote? She was in California attending Feinstein's funeral. Called her a friend. Okay, that's legit. Got it. And then she complained. They emptied her office and she couldn't get her personal belonging because she's in California. So she's a little enraged over this whole thing. Well, you know what? You probably should have gave up the office when you were no longer Speaker of the House. Hello? There are rules. You want everyone else to follow the rules? Well, you kind of got to follow them too. That's the way it kind of works, right? Um, the rules for thee, but not for all of us. Okay. Crazy. So that one we did. <clears throat> so I talked about this earlier. Um, Mr. Jordan. Mr. Jordan confirms that he is running. So Jim Jordan is confirming that he's going to run for Speaker of the House in, in a Wednesday letter asking for support for his GOP colleagues for House Speakership. Representative Jim Jordan laid out three fundamental tasks the House must accomplish. Number one, pass bills that need to be passed, do the oversight, and rein in the spending. Sounds good on paper. Will he do it? I have my doubts. I don't know why I have my doubts. Maybe I shouldn't be so uh, not trusting. So this is a quote from him. Far left progressive policies are destroying our communities, our security and our future, said Jordan, adding, we are having we have soaring crime across the country. We have an administration with wide open border policies that have caused chaos and left our country vulnerable. We've seen federal agencies turned on the American people, silencing speech online, targeting parents at school board meetings and flagging pro-life Catholics as potential threats. And we've witnessed blatant double standards in federal law enforcement. We continue to spend too much money. So he's laying out the right things. He's saying the right things. So Lewis is on board. This is the guy he wants. All right, I'll go along with it. But we have to remember it's not easy to get them out once they're in. So we've got to be sure. We've got to do all our due diligence here. If we can't get Trump, then I guess Jordan would be Second, be interesting. You know, this is this is a big story. This is historic. I mean, you might think this. You know, pulling the speaker out. Um, you know, no big deal. He wasn't good anyway. Get him out. It's never happened before. It's the first time it's happened. So people were like, "Save these videos. This is historic." You could tell your kids, your grandkids, that you lived through this. Kind of cool, isn't it? Wow, we lived through this. Well, there's going to be a lot more history made, I think, in the next six months. But um, this is a start. <clears throat> so put this one on your list and then you can go back, you know, when, when this is all over, uh, we were talking about this the other day, we were saving so many of the memes and so many of the stories, right? We're putting them away and putting them in, in, in a folder and forgetting about them because what'll happen is, you know, five years, 10 years from now, we'll go back and look and wow, I forgot about that. I forgot that happened. I forgot, you know, and you get to kind of relive all the wins that we've had along the way as we start to clean up the swamp and the swamp is very deep. So getting McCarthy out, a good start. Is it everything? Of course not. But we got to start. we got to start going somewhere. All right. Donald Trump again in court for day three. Again, he doesn't actually have to be there. But he wants to be there because he's defending his business. Here's what he asked. He's absolutely right about that. Uh, if you look at where it's going, it isn't going anywhere. Um, President Trump said, I would rather be in, uh, right now in Iowa. I'd rather be in New Hampshire or South Carolina or Ohio. But I'm stuck here because I have a corrupt attorney general that communicates with the DOJ in Washington. There's your key. Communicating with the DOJ, the Department of Injustice in Washington. The whole system is corrupt. He knows. He understands how this works. It's not just the people in New York City. It's not just them. They're being used for their skills, their position. They're, you know, they're being told. They're being probably dictated from Washington what they need to do and they're doing it I, who knows if they're you know they're complicit obviously they want to be part of it but the whole system is rigged so when you talk about the swamp the swamp goes deep my friends my gosh it's everywhere right but he's fighting it he's there he's there in person he's fighting it and he's ripping this judge a new one too i mean uh, he's just not stopping think about that this judge is going to determine what the outcome of this case is he's not sitting for it though he's letting them have it course he's going after Letitia James too I mean the the corrupt attorney general 
And then the judge slapped him with a, a soft um, you know, gag order yesterday telling him he can't go after uh, you know, people who work in the courtroom. Okay, who cares, right? No big deal. But he's coming out swinging. Who else do you know? What other politician do you know that would do this kind of thing? Would fight at this level? I don't know of any. I've never seen one. I don't even think Ronald Reagan would, would uh, be you know, at this level. I don't think he had that kind of a backbone. He did everything with comedy, right? As that was his whole little shtick. Is he, is he just kept things light and fun and laughter and, you know, that was his way of doing it. But he didn't, he wasn't the tough guy. This guy's the tough guy. He's from New York. He's he worked in the construction industry, right? Building all these Trump towers and, and other buildings that they've put up. Tough. Just tough, tough, tough. All right. I'm going to take a quick break, and then we'll get on with, I've got some more stories for you. Talk about Numi real quick here, if you have not yet tried Numi. I got, uh, some people have been emailing me and say, should I try it? I'm like, yeah, how else are you going to know it works? Nutraswish is a great product. I really love it. It is a nanoparticleized, not nanoparticles, nanoparticleized glutathione. So they take the glutathione, they put it through a proprietary process, and they make it really, really, really small, so that when you put it in your mouth, it actually is absorbed under the tongue into your body. Now, glutathione is important for detoxification and helping you with oxidative stress, which we are all uh, exposed to, right? So oxidative stress is what we want to avoid, uh, so it keeps us from aging and, and lets your body, uh, you know, look better and feel better and work better and all that kind of thing. But your liver runs out of it, and uh, we're not making as much as we get older. So we need to supplement, and supplementing is hard. Uh, the supplements themselves get done, uh, doesn't quite get where it needs to get. So this is a better solution, and they've added turmeric in there to uh, help with inflammation. Inflammation is what causes a lot of uh, joint pain. So this is an, uh, kind of a double-edged sword. It does uh, two things at once. I really like that a lot. And detoxification, got to get the toxins out. We're exposed to them all day long, uh, you know, from, from air, from water, from our food, whatever we're eating, whatever we're drinking, whatever we're breathing. Uh, you know, in the stores, you smell all these weird smells. A lot of that stuff is outgassing. It's toxicity, right? And we're being, we're exposed to it. So you need to get it out of your system. So all you can do is help your body get rid of it because the body knows what to do. It knows what doesn't belong. And glutathione is a great tool for that. So go over to um, this website, have a look. There's information on glutathione there, renegademedia.tv slash energy, renegademedia.tv slash energy, or scan the QR code on your screen and it'll take you right there. Okay. <clears throat> This is a story that um, just popped uh, about an hour ago, so I haven't really dug deeply into it yet, but I want to talk about it because it is sort of the sign of the times, if you will, <clears throat> right? So in communist countries, what do they do with their political opponents, right? They usually put them in jail, right? What do they do with the people who support the political opponents? They, they villainize them, and we've seen it done, right? Trump supporters are what? What do they call it? You're arachnophobes. You're like, that's a joke, uh, right? They, they, they just label us all these different things. And what happens in the minds of the people who are believing that, they look at us and they say, I could never be friends with you because you're all of these things. We're not. But they've been told we are. So they vilify. And if that doesn't work, which it hasn't, right? It hasn't deterred us. You know, Hillary Clinton called us deplorables. And we use that term. <laughs> we wear it like a badge of honor. We are deplorables indeed doesn't work. Name calling, they thought would do this. Ah, okay, great. You know, if you think so, then I am, right? I, nobody cares anymore. Was a big thing in the past, but they've used it so much that it lost its power. So now what are they going to do? This is interesting. The FBI quietly created a new category of extremism ahead of the 2024 20, election to include Trump MAGA supporters. We ought to be concerned about this, guys. We ought to pay attention here. This is from Newsweek. The federal government believes that the threat of violence and major civil disturbances around the 2024 U.S. presidential election is so great that it has quietly created the new category of extremists that it seeks to track and counter. Donald Trump's army of mega followers. Okay, when I read that, if I read between the lines here, what do you think I'm seeing? What are you seeing when you read between the lines? So I'm reading between the lines. I'm saying they're worried about violence from our side, which has not been demonstrated. There was no violence on January 6th from our side, maybe a few, but most of it was triggered by who? 
Antifa, FBI, right? There were those people that were infiltrating into these organizations. They were creating the violence. We weren't. You got to figure if there's 2 million of us on site, there would be an incredible amount of violence. There would be your own choice. Um, so, yeah, this is from Zero Hedge. Very quippy article. I like this. Um, here we are entering the final quarter of 2023. And we have the United States government and many state governments, including New York's former governor, Andrew Cuomo, current left-wing governor, Kathy Hochul, and the supermajority Dem legislature proclaiming for all to hear that they did not force anyone to do anything detrimental in the past 3.5 years. Unbelievable. Did you hear this? They're actually saying with straight faces, they didn't force you to wear a mask or lock down or shutter your business or choose between taking an experimental drug or losing your job. Nope, they did none of that. And you, well, you're flat out crazy if you think they did. You are lying. You're exaggerating. You're totally overacting, my friends. Unfortunately for Big Brother, oops, uh, I mean, unfortunately for 100% reliable, never lies to us government, we have actual documents, including lawsuits, news stories, social media posts, and videos of the government at all levels mandating and forcing us to do all of those things and more. Can't make this stuff up. It's Orwellian for sure. Didn't happen. Didn't ha you were never forced. The whole reason I'm here today, why I took this path and moved away from the path I was on, coaching, working with businesses, marketing, all the rest of that kind of thing, the reason I'm on this path doing this show right here, right now, is because they locked us down in 2020. When Newsom came out and said, I want you to shut your business down at midnight, put the key in the door, and don't come back until we tell you. That was a turning point for me. Yeah, I love that. But there was no reason for it. So they tell you it didn't happen. It happened. You know it happened. They're trying to pull the wool over your eyes, and there are a certain amount of people that will believe it. They will believe it. Say, well, you know, maybe it really was my choice. No, it wasn't your choice. It was job or jab, Right? Which one do you want? Do you want the job? Get the jab. That was it. Crazy. I, 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 I just, I can't believe that we're here. All right. So the story you have up there, I put that up a little early. Sorry about that. Um, is about the 75,000 uh, healthcare workers are on strike for three days uh, here in California. Um, this is from the Associated Press. Picketing began Wednesday morning at Kaiser Permanente Hospitals as some 75,000 75, healthcare workers go on strike in Virginia, California, and three other states over wages and staffing shortages make, uh, marking the latest major labor unrest in the United States. Kaiser Permanente is one of the country's largest in insurers and healthcare system operators with 39 hospitals nationwide. The nonprofit company, sure, um, based in Oakland. sending customers to clinics and hospitals it runs or contracts with to provide care. The coalition of Kaiser Permanente unions representing about 85,000 health systems employees nationally approved a strike for three days in California, Colorado, and Oregon, and Washington, and only for one day in Virginia and Washington, D.C. All right. I have something to say on this one. All right. Why are they striking? Think about it. Why are they striking? Oh, it's for more money. Partly. Why are they really striking? And, you know, you walk through the grocery stores, their product's missing. Brands are gone. We were looking for a specific mayonnaise the other day. It's, a, it's an organic. It is, it is made right here in California. It's, it's, you know, it's a really great mayonnaise. And it used to always be there. And I'm like, no, it's, we don't have it anymore. Why don't you have it anymore? Go on their website, gone. Wow, company's out of business. Happens all the time. I mean, you just you pay attention when you're shopping. Think about the brands you used to buy and see if they're still there. There's less and less choice. There might be more of the ones that it's, that's available so you don't see so much holes in the shelves now, but the variety is not there. These are all artifacts. is it, it just struck me as that. It's like one of these things like, okay, they're striking. Why are they striking? Well, they're striking because they're overworked. They fired everybody. 
I don't know, a third of the workforce or something like that that was fired. And they didn't bring them back. So these guys are like, hey, we're done with this. Uh, we don't want to deal with this anymore. It's crazy. All right. So that's the hard, the hard news, if you will. Um, I'm going to show this to you. I put, this, I put this up on Facebook the other day. Take a picture of it. Take a screen snap of it. Um, you're welcome to share it. It is also on the Renegade Media Telegram channel. Uh, it says, if at this point you still don't know what's happening, it's a choice you have made to remain in the dark. A lot of people commenting on that. A lot of people liking it, sharing it. So I thought I'd give it to you. It's on the Renegade Media channel, but take a screenshot of it if you want it here um, as well kind of uh, a fun thing to talk about. So we're going to go into maybe the maybe the fun part of the news. Uh, some things that are kind of interesting here that I found that I wanted to share with you. I know we're at the hour. Um, you know, Lewis and I try to do, we're trying to keep the show to about 90 minutes because I know you guys have lives. Other than watching us, we appreciate you. We love you. But um, I know you have lives and things to do. So this one's really interesting. Um, let's put up the graphic here. This is from the Daily Mail. And they're saying more than 90% of malls, shopping malls, with a cheesecake factory in them are current on their loan payments. What was that? So if a mall has a cheesecake factory in it, they're doing well enough that they're not behind on their mortgage payments, and most of the other ones are. The presence of a cheesecake factory in a mall could be used as an indicator of the facility's financial health, a new report has shown. Somewhat surprising, the correlation was aired Tuesday in a paper penned by Moody's Analytics. In terms of loan performance, a good measure of financial health, the report found that about 93% of loans backed by malls boasting the chain, the cheesecake factory chain, are current on their payments compared to a meager 72% rate sported by those without a cheesecake factory. Interesting. The casual relationship, Readly explained, is likely the result of strong site selection by the company rather than the restaurant serving, uh, saving a failing mall. As of today, there are 700 enclosed malls spread across the country. Uh, this is hard. Um, down from more than 2,500 seen in the 80s and 200 of them sporting a cheesecake factory. Well, I guess it's safe to say that Americans, we love our cheesecake. I haven't been to the Cheesecake Factory in years. I don't know. I remember they used to have those egg rolls with the avocado. I, I, and the menu. It was, like, it was like a phone book, right? They had so many things you could, uh, you could think about, you know, to order in there. It's crazy. All right. Elon Musk, he likes our show. How do I know Elon Musk likes our show? Because he posted this today. And let me see if I can make it a little bigger. So you might be able to read it. But if you can't, I'll read it for you. Um, still looks a little small on my screen. Uh, citizen journalism is the path to a better future. And the photo you're seeing there, remember he went down to Eagle Pass, Texas the other day to see for himself what was going on, and he made his own videos, <clears throat> and he couldn't figure out how to switch the camera around? Okay, he's not good with the, the technology, but he made his own videos. So he says, I strongly encourage people around the world to post news about events as they're happening in both text and video. Of course, that's what this show's about. Right? We see things out there and we want to talk about them. Uh, you know, I don't get out uh, into the world as much as I want to. Uh, but if I, you know, I'm always, I've got a camera with me. I always carry an extra microphone, a camera. I've got a gimbal. I've always got stuff that if something were to happen, I could jump out of the car and I could be ready to film in like minutes. So I've always got that with me. And of course, if there's a cell signal, we could stream and, you know, that kind of thing. It's always, always there. Why? Because you never know when you're going to happen upon something that is newsworthy. We are all citizen journalists. We all have cameras, microphones in our pockets with us all the time. Might as well make use of them. I got people who are sending me pictures. Anne-Marie sent me some pictures. I got to dig into a little bit more of what in the world she sent me um, of really, really, really fancy buses down in Texas where she is picking up these migrants from Motel 6 and people actually carrying their luggage for them. What? What? I got to dig into that. I got to see more about what that's about. But she's a citizen journalist, right? She drives by it every day. So she took the camera and took pictures and sent me the pictures. And, you know, if I could figure out what's going on there with a little bit more detail, I can share that with you. So I encourage all of you, if you're in these situations where you see something, take pictures, send them to us, Robert at renegademedia.tv or get on our Telegram channel, Renegade Media. And you could post there, post it as a comment and just post your pictures. A lot of people are starting to do that now. I love it. Because I get to see things I wouldn't normally see. All right. 
Boy, uh, it's been um, a quite a fun show. We've got one more thing here. This one, uh, my dear friend Master Baggy found, and I thought it would love it. I love when those uh, those kind of videos come up. There's always a lot of fun. All right, thank you guys for being here. Make sure you are subscribed and following this channel. Um, it's important that helps us with the algorithm and make sure, as Lewis said yesterday, make sure you're signed into your uh, Rumble account. If you don't have one, uh, get signed up. You don't have to pay anything. There's a, there's a free level. You can just have a free account and uh, that allow you to post videos too. Um, if you do that, that helps us. It helps the algorithm and it certainly helps uh, let people know that this is a show that you want to watch. I don't know what um, Lewis's plans are for tomorrow. I hope he's going to be able to join us. Um, we'll see. It depends on the itinerary where he is. It's, it's a little uncertain at the moment, but I know he'll touch base with me when he gets wheels down and he gets uh, settled into wherever he is, and um, he'll be able to let us know what the deal is for tomorrow. So stay tuned. Um, we'll be back tomorrow. Same time, same channel. I appreciate every one of you. I remember appreciation is the shortcut.